<laughs> What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the corner. We're going to be wrapping up our Good Friday coverage here with some interesting news. It would appear that Twitter may have made a pretty big mistake in their decision to use their quote unquote poison pill to go and shut down Elon Musk's bid to purchase the company. And uh, things are getting pretty spicy, including Jack Dorsey weighing in. And now, ever since news has broken uh, that they've used the poison pill. Elon has been active on Twitter, interacting with several interesting people, um, <clears throat> posting some memes. He did get himself in a little bit of trouble with the SEC, so I think he's got to be kind of careful here. Um, he's probably going to get a big fine from them for not disclosing his shares earlier or sooner, whatever the case may be, but it's Elon. He kind of just does whatever he wants to do, and for better or worse... That's the case. Now, earlier today, Jack Dorsey, uh, founder, finally tweets about Elon Musk's takeover bid. In the tumultuous following, tumult following Elon Musk's bid to buy, Twitter, <clears throat> the only voice we haven't heard has been from the company co-founder, Jack Dorsey, until now. Taking to Twitter, Dorsey answered mul answer multiple questions posted by a user. Was Musk investing contingent on Dorsey leaving? Did Dorsey leave because of Musk? Dorsey answers, no. Since the first question would be answered best by Musk, it's likely that Dorsey is confirming the latter, that his departure had nothing to do with the Tesla's founder's constant public critique of the company. However, it is interesting that Dorsey felt the need to clarify that, quote, I wasn't pushed out, I left. The comments highlight the high pressure nature of the role of the Twitter CEO. The company's stagnant stock price reflects what many people uh, believe while the service has captured the public's attention, it has yet to really optimize its profit-making potential and overall reach. Uh, previously, when it appeared that Elon would join Twitter's board, Dorsey offered support to the move, saying, I'm really happy that Elon is joining the board. He cares deeply about our world and Twitter's role in it. Paraj and Elon both lead with their hearts, and it will be an incredible team. The corporate honeymoon lasts about two weeks. In April 13th, Securities and Exchange Commission filing documenting his bid, Musk confirmed, I don't have confidence in Twitter's current management. During an all-hands staff meeting yesterday, Argawal reportedly told employees that the company was not being, quote, held hostage by Musk's takeover bid, according to one account, when asked by one employee about the nature of Musk's, Musk's acquisition bid, Argawal said, why don't you ask him? Despite his avoidance of the spotlight, Argawal and former Twitter engineer, not given to bold public statements like Musk or Dorsey may increasingly be compelled to take a more aggressive, aggressive public stance on the company's future. Twitter's future is now in flux. Um, now that Musk's bid kicked off the speculation that other entities such as private firm Toma Bravo and others may enter the fray and start a bidding war. Additionally, Musk is no longer the largest Twitter shareholder. That title goes to the Vanguard Group, which now owns 10.3% of the company. Musk holds 9.2, worth roughly $3.78 billion. Today, in response to Musk's bid, Twitter has reportedly put in place an old poison pill strategy. The move would prevent a hostile takeover by allowing Twitter to inundate the market with new shares or offer discounted shares to existing shareholders if the entity looking to buy Twitter amasses more than 15% of the company. As a public company, Twitter has always been for sale, wrote Jack Dorsey, adding his remarks to Musk's bid. That's the real issue. Well, now we see uh, essentially Elon getting involved in memes. You know, I don't know if he, like, I know it's a crazy number and it's like hard to think that, man, was he even ever really serious about buying it? But I mean, 54, 20, um, you know, uh, you know, interesting. It's also just five days before the uh, much celebrated holiday. So Maybe he has something in plan for that. I mean, he's talked about having his plan B. He talked about that during um, a, a TED talk yesterday. But you see this one here. He, he reacts to this meme. Twitter investors happy with their 54.20 per share, getting mad at the Twitter board, looking at keeping an easy gig that gives them free shares. 
Um, and then he also pointed out this Twitter thread or a poll that nearly 75% of people out of 20,000 votes vote that uh, um, they want him to buy Twitter. Now, it's, you know, I don't know. I assume that the Bitcoin community was probably largely fans of Elon. Maybe not. I, I, I guess I don't know. Certainly the Doge community would be. Um, and it's, it's pretty interesting. Now, a lot of people are pointing out that maybe this was a big mistake because essentially you've now diluted or you could dilute the everyman shareholder by pushing out more shares into the market. And uh, that may be true, but it's one way to prevent him from getting um, a bigger share of it. But now people are speculating that it opens Elon Musk to suing Twitter for to force them to um, put it to a shareholder vote, meaning, you know, allowing the shareholders to vote. Now, does this Vanguard group who owns 10%, are they with Elon? We don't know. Um, they bought, they're buying a bunch of stock. Are they buying more? I mean, if, if they thought the buy, you know, if you thought that the buyout was real at $54, you could buy the stock at a huge discount right now, like a very large, very large discount. I mean, you have $45. If you stuck, you could make $10 a share overnight. I, you know, and that's, I, it's difficult to know exactly what, um, you know, what this all means. Of course, uh, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos says his offer to buy Twitter is very interesting, but he's a, he doesn't know if Musk will end up owning the company. Well, nobody really knows that. We all use Twitter, obviously, to some degree. It's a very interesting service and capability. Jassy said in the interview with CNBC Squawk Box, it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, the I, I don't see, I really don't see it coming. I don't see it happening, but you, you never really know. Um, you see Donald Trump Jr. writing, Elon Musk controlling Twitter and allowing free speech is literally worse than Pearl Harbor. Cernovich tweeting, hi, Elon, have you considered that Twitter is blocking your offer? because they are afraid you'd obtain documents proving they shadow ban and censor, which could contradict their sworn testimony made before Congress. This could be an Enron type scenario you've uncovered. It's actually a very good point. Like <clears throat> they're opening up themselves to a, a large level of scrutiny um, and from a, a, a wide uh, variety of places. You know, and, and the people that whine about it, you know, Elon Musk has enough money to end homelessness as hunger. First of all, that's incorrect. But instead, he wants to buy Twitter. And then somebody says, Mark Zuckerberg has Mark Zuckerberg has enough money to end homelessness, homelessness and hunger, but he used it to swing an election. That's what they say. You know, th this is the key statement. Like, you see Kurt Schlichter, as a Twitter shareholder, I demand the board pursue shareholder interests and not hold their own with regard to Elon Musk offers and not their own. Each board member has a fiduciary duty to do so. And you're going to start seeing that word a lot more uh, over the next couple of days, because essentially what, when people are saying a fiduciary duty, you know, your number one job, like as a CEO and ownership, the, you know, you have to maximize shareholder value. And if you believe that, you know, Everybody, literally everybody who owns Twitter stock right now and has bought it at less than $54 makes money. Every shareholder makes money with this deal. Um, and you're not doing your job. In fact, this is a, you can litigate against this, which is what people are alluding could be Elon's plan B. Goldman Sachs says Elon's offer of $54.20 is too low. Goldman currently has a sell rating and a $30 price target for the stock. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? $54 and 20 cents is nearly double. So it's too low. I mean, it's actually nuts. You see, I never thought about this. This shows these analysts control the prices and lie to the public to force price changes whenever they feel like it. Well, yeah. Of course, this is part of the reason I don't really play in the stock market. I'm not saying you can't make money there, but I'm saying that it's too corrupt. You know, and each board member having this duty 
you know, it's it's actually pretty interesting. This could open them up to massive lawsuits. Um, you could open them up to, by the way, also now shareholders banding to banding together and suing the board. Like I think they talked about was it like board insurance or something like that? Um you, you see like the board member's personal liability insurance company is going to be pacing the floor. Wonder how fast it takes them to get dropped. Oh, this is in response to Twitter is considering the poison pill option. If the current Twitter board takes actions contrary to shareholder interests, they would be breaching their fiduciary duty. The liability they would thereby assume could be titanic in scale. Maybe Twitter knows there's some secret information that they just couldn't let Elon get a hold of. Either way, it's going to be an interesting weekend to hear from Elon, hear if we see anything else, see if we see any more memes or anything like that. But this is potentially a very big mistake by them. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on all the news as this develops. And we'll talk to you again real soon.